Hey everyone, and thanks for tuning in. I'm John Peters. I'm a woodworker, and I often get the question from people who want to get into woodworking and DIY home improvement projects about what tools they should buy first. So I've come up with kind of a short list. It's five tools, and they're in no particular order, but these are the first five tools I would suggest to anybody uh, wanting, wanting to get into woodworking or kind of home improvement projects. So we'll start with the miter saw. A miter saw is a great tool. You can use it for all kinds of projects from cutting hardwood flooring to crown molding, baseboard moldings, windows and door casings. A miter saw is great for trim work. It's also good for framing. You can set it up to cut framing. It's very convenient to be able to get a nice straight 90 degree angle cut. You can also set a miter saw up at all types of angles anywhere from maybe a little bit more than 45 degrees to everything in between. So definitely a miter saw. I would suggest anybody who wants to do any kind of home improvement projects and they're really going to get into it to buy a miter saw. You don't have to go as big as I did here. This saw is about $650. You can get a decent miter saw from anywhere from let's say maybe $250 to $450. Then I would say, and again, this is in no particular order, a drill. A drill is a great tool to have, and I prefer a cordless drill. And when you buy a drill, especially if you are buying this for your home, make sure it has a hammer drill setting. That's a setting on the drill that will allow you to drill into concrete. So definitely buy a good drill too. My feeling is a drill and an impact driver are something that you're going to use a lot. So don't cheap out and buy kind of the cheapest one at the store, buy something that's pretty decent where the battery will hold the charge and the tool will do what it's meant to do. So a drill and an impact driver are really two different things. First time I used an impact driver was maybe 10 years ago and until then I had been using a, a screw gun or a drill to drive screws. Since using an impact driver, I don't know if I've ever driven a screw with a cordless drill again just because the impact driver is designed to drive the screw without putting a lot of pressure on your wrist or your hand. So in this case, the impact driver really does the job. And if you ever drive any kind of a screw with an impact driver for the first time and you've been used to using a drill or a cordless drill, you'll never use a drill to drive a screw again either. It's, it's a great tool. And uh, so I'm gonna say, definitely a drill and an impact driver. So that's uh, three tools. So now we're at three tools. You're definitely going to want a circular saw. And again, if you're just getting into this, get a cordless circular saw and even look for what's called a combination kit. So that means you'll be able to get maybe all three or possibly another tool all in one set and make sure that they're all using the same battery because that's a, a big thing. Batteries can get expensive. The nice thing about a circular saw, it's great for cutting down sheet goods like plywood. Uh, it's also great for cutting um, timber framing, or not timber framing, but just two by fours and things like that. Uh, circular saw is a very handy tool. So that's, uh, now we're at four tools. The next tool and the last one that I'll suggest, at least for now, because if you get into this, you're going to be buying a lot more tools, but the compressor combination kit, and this is really like four tools, but I'm going to count it as one because it comes as a combination kit and you can't use a nail gun without a compressor. So the compressor comes with, in this case, a 16 gauge nail gun, which you'll use for trim work like window and door casing. An 18 gauge nail gun, again, you'll use that for uh, trim work, also making frames in the shop, attaching moldings to cabinets in the shop. And this one also comes with a staple gun, which I've never used before and I'm actually looking forward to it. This I just bought because I'm having a problem with my compressor. It was, I believe, about $250, so I think well, well worth it. If I were to just buy the compressor, I'd be spending somewhere around $200. So I figured spend a little bit more and get the extra nail guns. And I think this one here was the real clincher for me because sometimes when I'm stretching canvases, if you use a regular staple gun, that really gives your hand a workout. So I'm looking forward to opening up this and uh, 
I'll probably post a video on maybe how to build a, a uh, canvas stretcher or something. Uh, you can look forward to that one next week. As far as brands, I'm not loyal to any tool brand. The compressor I'm using right now is a Bostitch and the nail gun is a Bostitch and they've worked good. Uh, the nail gun is still working, but I'm having a problem with the compressor. Uh, I expect the port cable to work great. As far as the screw gun or, or the drill and impact driver and the circular saw, there's four brands that I can think of that I would lean towards. One is Milwaukee, the other is DeWalt, Hitachi's, I've always liked Hitachi's, and Bosch. I'm sure there's others, but I just can't think of them right now. So anyway, that is the suggestion that I would give to anybody if they were going to get into woodworking or just starting to get into woodworking home improvement projects. If you can think of something else you want to leave it in the comments, please do. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. I just realized that you can run a nail gun without a compressor. Some nail guns use a battery, some nail guns use a battery and a gas charge, but I don't really use them all that often. And it's not the first nail gun that I would suggest to somebody just getting into woodworking or home improvement projects.